Welcome back to the Fan Morning Show. You're here with Ailish Forfar, Blake Murphy, and J.D. Bunkus. And we're going to be joined by your ex, Ben Ennis, who's now upgraded his life to the fan drive time. Honestly, not really a big fan of people bringing that up because it's not really like a funny one where you go, You're oh, sad you about it, eh? No, I just mean, you, usually you go, hey, he upgraded and maybe not, but it's like he obviously did. Like he went with Stephen Brunt. And so it's actually such a discrepancy that it's, it's like it's kind of rude. It's all right. You'll always agrees. be younger than Ben. You know, you're supposed to be, uh, of course, much younger. Ben, we found out how old you were today, and JD put you on blast on the air. Yeah. He what? said you were 62. No, I didn't. What? What I said is, his real what age. What is happening? I don't know. What is happening? What do you mean? What's what happening? is happening? What do you mean? Well, I was, I was talking to <laughs> producer Vic uh, yeah. before you guys brought me on, yeah. and like he kind of gave me the Coles notes of... What garbage you're spewing on oh, what people didn't into the tweet world. you happy birthday? <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to receive a happy birthday yeah, tweet. Yeah. No. It's no, coming I'm up. Not. Big four or five, buddy. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> yeah, in yeah. eight years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> minus seven. <laughs> I'm good at that math. Anyways, moving on. Uh Ennis uh joins us right now. Forty four. They no, but they bought it, is all I need to say. Is they said that you look great for forty four, and I was like, Yeah, I know, he really does. And they really bought it. Everyone bought it. So it is what it is, buddy. Are you, you know, if they say you are what they say you are, you know, so. Nobody says that. That's not an expression. I, I did. just made that up. I, 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 they I are did. what they say no. you are. I, that's, that. <laughs> <laughs> they are what you say you are. In this case, you're 44. I, yeah. That's a saying, man. And that's you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, you can't refute it. They are what you say they are. That's a, that's a thing that I always feel. So. Uh, I needed to have you on today because we're at the point where, hey, it's uh, how many hours until they're not allowed to sign free agents for God knows how long, and we'll just be yeah, back in lockouts. Huh? This was confusing to me at first because they're yeah. like midnight Wednesday, yeah. so I was like, okay, so yeah, so now eleven fifty nine t- Tuesday night. Yeah, that's why I thought. Midnight, as we understand, is the the first minute of the day. No, it's it's eleven fifty nine tonight. That's yeah. why uh, Kevin Gossman can have. His media availability at three o'clock this afternoon, and and not five o'clock, where it would have you know actually cut into our show. But that's uh, fine. Are they going to cut into, like the? Are, are they going to cut into real Kipper and Porn for that? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I I'm not. That's the not fair. Director, that's but, not fair. Uh, you don't get to you don't get to get the <laughs> media conference if it's not the sport that your show does exclusively. I'm sorry, no. Yeah. You're banned from that. If anything, they got to make you work <laughs> earlier and them come in for your slot. And I those guys, no, those guys grind it out. That you guys get that extra time off your show. So, yeah. um, by the way, before we move any further, before I get your feelings on the Jays, before we catch up on this, um, I, it, it dawned on me that this will be Blake and Ailish's first lockout. Oh, you know, like oh. that. Then, <laughs> well, that first, as a radio guy, yeah, not as my radio. first in general. Yeah, of course, but no, no, no. Oh, buddy, there's a pretty huge difference when you have to do it every <laughs> yeah. day in the summer when there's no content. Uh, Would you like to impart any words of wisdom yeah, as a 44 year old man advice. who's done many of them on them? Yeah. Well, I would say that, I mean, the most recent experience we have sort of uh, along similar lines, I guess, and it won't be even anywhere close to this because guess what? You're going to, it's a lockout during the off season. And the, the weird uh, messaging by, behind this is that there won't, won't be one second of the, the season missed. So it's really not that, that, that much of a travesty, but I would say, um, try to convince ESPN to, to run another documentary series that, uh, you know, 30 million people in North America watch, uh, and then, and then talk about that. Like uh, JD and I did with the last dance, uh, when there were no sports on for mm. months and months. Oh, can't wait. <laughs> He's really hyped it up as a as a fun thing to come. It's so fun. It's so fun. Oh, yeah. The, the well, fight no, between millionaires and billionaires. Yeah. No, no, Blake knows about CBAs. I know, so, that's like, I, mean. I don't know. Just lean on Blake, I would say, during this time. If, if you ha- if you want to go through the minutia of the CBA, he knows. Again, I He's can read do, a few. I can yeah. do it. It's yeah. just not entertaining radio. No, I was just going to say that it's early in the morning. and We're trying to raise our viewer and uh, <laughs> listening I don't want to cause accidents on the 401. <laughs> Someone's, like, just snoring listening to me Falling talk asleep. about years of no. player control and so what they're deciding the new on arb yeah. scales and is three percent goes into the escrow versus seven <laughs> yeah, percent we'll, we'll do one of those uh blake does your homework segments yeah. and i'll just explain what <laughs> escrow is and yeah. why it matters yeah it'd be well, great. No, you know, you, what you have to do is lean into the actual tangible baseball element of the things uh, of the of the new CBA because there is that and there's already been some stuff that yeah. leaked. You know, you can talk about universal DH Hate or it. the the seven playoff teams in each league and the and Hate the buy and it's and it well 
what about the, the you're actually going to choose your your playoff opponent? I love that. You like that. That's yeah. that's going to be like a Sunday. You think that's going to be games. a thing though for sure? Oh, it's been proposed. Like the the, yeah, but the teams have pushed and back. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's all negotiating tools. I think it would be a spectacular television moment. Um, mm-hmm. And if there's a, a few dollars to be made, I, I, I think it would be hard for for people to say no to it. But yeah, uh, there's there's actual interesting baseball elements to to this thing. But I I, I couldn't care less about the money side of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but maybe we get another article like Zimmerman, uh, where it's like not worth it if you don't don't have to oh, know yes. with the boys. Oh no, there's it. gonna be some players that are yeah. gonna yeah, yeah. Th- that are, you're gonna be thinking differently of a couple of guys here in a couple of months. I think with uh, some of the rhetoric that that comes out of uh, the negotiation. Yeah, actually, if we could impart some wisdom on the players, it's like don't don't yeah, get just involved. Up. Just shut up about it because yeah, Kevin <laughs> Pillar and Ryan Zimmerman, you never recovered. <laughs> like you just you didn't Correct. recover. Uh, Kevin Pillar had the "I need to feed my family" quote. Um, mm-hmm. that, that was a tough one as people were yeah. actually trying to feed their families <laughs> during Correct. the pandemic. Uh, so. What are your feelings just in general about this offseason so far, like the signings they've made and the seeming direction that they're going? Because it it does feel a little, I always say it, it feels a little murky in terms of what they could do here moving forward. We won't know about the trade stuff until they've actually decided on all those CBA things. Um, that we've heard different names. We've gone all the way up the ladder, all the way to Freddie Freeman and then Chris Taylor and then all the way down to guys you've never heard of, Kikuchi's, like whatever. Um, but it just it does feel like there's a lot that's kind of on the table here and that the Marcus Semyon hole, I- I'm starting to feel that now. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's okay. Um, Kevin Gossman's a great signing, and, and he, uh, you know, had a career best season, and his splitter is among the best pitches in Major League Baseball, and the deal looks good, and maybe he took less to go to the Jays as opposed to the Mets, but he's replacing the American League Cy Young Award winner. The Blue Jays are losing the th- the second runner-up in the American League MVP voting in Marcus Semien, and yeah, you can't be upset that they didn't match a seven-year ridiculous deal that the Rangers gave him. But that's a massive, massive hole. A guy set the Major League record for home runs hit by a second baseman. A guy's no longer in your lineup. Um, your offense is still your strength, and now you've got four incredible starters uh, to start the season. But that's that's a massive hole. The the next move they make has to be for an infielder, uh, ideally a left-handed hitting uh, infielder, ideally a left-handed hitting infielder who actually has on-base skills. Um, Joey Wendell would have been nice, but obviously the the Rays are going to be loath to to trade within their division. But that's, I think once you once we see that player. And maybe it's a couple because, I mean, truly you could add a couple. You, you you don't have an opening day second baseman. You don't really have an opening day third baseman unless you believe Kevin Biggio is one of those, and I don't. And I like Santiago Espinal plenty, but as like a 26th man, I, I, I really do think the next couple of moves from a positional player standpoint is is really going to tell the story here. I think you're you're still adding a starter, but that starter – yeah, it's going to be along the lines of a Kikuchi, maybe a, a bounce back guy like that. Um, somebody who's who's not you know top three in your rotation. Your top three looks pretty solid right now, but somebody that's backfilling as a fourth or fifth starter and, and forcing Nate Pearson to AAA to start the season. What I'm really interested to see is the quality, the caliber of the infielder. Is it a Chris Bryant? Is it a Chris Taylor? Is it one of those guys, or are we are we talking about the second rung down from those guys? So one of the names that was somewhat floating around yesterday was Freddie Freeman. And yeah. do you uh, do you take any uh, stock in that, or was it just a fun little Instagram that went well, viral? <laughs> it, it, well, it, it went beyond the Instagram thing, mm-hmm. right, because John Heyman tweeted about it. So we actually started the show yesterday with it. How, how could you not? It makes less <laughs> than no sense. Like, I just, I, I don't, like, in theory, sure. Hey, split time at first base between Vlad and Freddie Freeman and then whoever's not playing first is 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 DHing but that's also insane because you have uh, a George Springer who has not exactly been the the picture of health the last couple of years obviously you would like to get him off his feet every once in a while obviously there's other players that you'd like to get off their feet and depending on whether Alejandro Kirk is on this team or not um and whether Gabriel Moreno is on this team or not there's other um bats that that maybe aren't catching that could could use the dh spot i like if if your theory is hey it doesn't matter what the positional fit is if you've got a chance to add a freddie freeman do it i i I guess i can follow you down that line but i i just from a from a nuts and bolts standpoint i have no idea what that would look like but the the blue jays must at least see a 
there's a non-zero possibility of, of that happening, I guess, in 2022, if, if the reporting is correct on this, that they've actually reached out to Freddie Freeman. Now, I don't know if that's just a, hey, if your market is completely collapsed and, and you're not going to get the multi-year thing and we can get you um, for 50 cents on the dollar, which is hard to imagine uh, a guy like Freddie Freeman, who's an MVP coming off a World Series, would be. But I, it's, it, I really... It's a head scratcher. Uh, I, in theory, why not? Freddie Freeman, left-handed power bat, who's one of the best hitters in baseball over the last decade. But I, you're not moving Vlad to third like that ship has long sailed. That's in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean now. Like it's it's just it's not happening. So I just I unless there's some insane trade that's 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 secondary that's going to come after a signing of Freddie Freeman, it makes no sense. Yeah, no. The, so much of this time of year is trying to put pieces together, right? Where you go, yeah. okay, well, what makes sense and what could be real and what's BS? And that was it. Is At first, I tried to put myself in the mindset of, well, this is a team that tried to pay Brantley last year, but that was before I realized what Freddie Freeman's market was looking like, and he's not getting a two-year, 30-whatever-million-dollar deal no, that Brantley he's got. He's going to get six years, yeah. $180 yeah. Million. yeah, so so that's it. So that was the end of that. I just I, You never know. And, well, I mean, I never know because I don't know very many things until Google <laughs> tells me them. So speaking of pieces together, um, I think it's interesting that you said the thing about Pearson because it really does feel like, yeah, if they go get a Kikuchi type that – I don't know, that they're putting him back on the trade block or he's starting the year in AAA. My only thing is, is like, again, putting the pieces together. And we as a show have sort of been feeling this out from talking to people and some within the organization, some outside of it, some that are insiders, that maybe Pearson's value is too low to be moving him this offseason and that he's actually not involved in trade stuff until he can build his value up a little bit, that, that the rest of baseball has seen what has happened with him over the last year. But with the rotation in mind now, going back to that, at first, when I saw the Robbie Ray signing, or sorry, the Gossman signing, I went, oh, wow, Robbie Ray is going to get six years and more money. And then he didn't. And so then I went, oh, it's because they like Gossman more. It's just that they like him more and they made this risky signing. And now there's stuff about Ray's vaccination status and whether or not he even, you know, necessarily was really putting a premium on being in Toronto. And now I'm starting to question as to whether or not, like, they just viewed it more as a, hey, these two guys are close and we'll go with the guy that we could actually get here. Um, yeah. That's how, how does it feel to you? Well, the, there, I mean, the opt out isn't anything, isn't, isn't nothing, right? The, the, uh -huh. the opt out out of the, after the third year for Robbie Ray, that you are, you're locked into Kevin Gossman, which might actually end up being a bad thing if he's 35 and, and not, you know, doesn't have one of the best splitters in major league baseball, or it might be a great thing if he's living up to the contract through the, the first three years and Robbie Ray is opting out and getting yet another, Max Scherzer type deal at that point. Also, the draft pick compensation isn't nothing either, that you are getting a draft pick. Now, that being said, I think it's a little bit overdone. Like We talked to David Sampson last week who said essentially that front offices don't even really consider it when, when they're you know signing a player for over $100 million that you're giving up a, a sandwich pick is, is not super impactful considering the, the history of success with picks uh, of that ilk. But there, you can make an argument that Kevin Gossman is is a better bet to perform over the next five years. Um, they're remarkably similar. Like they, they they both have this incredible one pitch. They're two pitch guys, and 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 they're coming off career years, both of them, and they've been kind of inconsistent throughout their career. But I would make the argument that Gossman's been more consistent. I mean, they both have five years throughout their career where they've been according to ERA plus where a hundred is, is average five years, both of them where they've been above average, but Gossman has always been a control guy. So if it goes for him, it's going to be because he's getting hit, which for me is better than if it goes for Robbie Ray, it means that he's throwing 300 pitches in the first two innings and he's killing your bullpen and you're scratching your head, wondering if he'll ever get it back in the zone where Gossman has, okay, he hasn't been a, a guy with an ERA of two and a half and, and 200 plus strikeouts every year, but he has never lacked control. Like he's always had very good control, always kept it in the zone. And to me, that's, that's, it, it's such an underrated skill when it comes to, to starting pitching that I, I think it's, it's, if, uh, if I was just evaluating them dispassionately, like you can make the argument that Kevin Gossman might be the, the better bet. There's also the element, too, of maybe that 
pitch profile ages a little more gracefully where you're not as reliant on velocity and, and uh sure you know now, both guys did have an uptick in fastball velocity like yeah. that has to be said yeah. right yeah um so you mentioned gossman could be better over the next five years in, in that response there and jd said yesterday that hey the five year isn't really that relevant a window because you have a window right now this is a rare chance for us to get to evaluate a decision the front office made in almost pure A versus B terms. Like you just you just mentioned David Sampson downplaying the comp pick. The the money in the opt out is whatever from a from a fan perspective. So this is as close to A versus B as we get. What is the window you'll be evaluating this decision through? Like is if Gossman is better in years 4 and 5 and that means he's had a better 5 year window but Ray's been better early on, where do you land on on that choice? Well, I mean, ultimately, I mean, it's not going to be as granular as that. It's going to be, did they make the playoffs? Did they win a World Series? Did they win a World Series where they had Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette? That's That's ultimately what this front office is going to be judged on. And uh, depending on what the, the playoff rules are in 2022, that might not even be... Like, if they expand the playoffs by, by two spots in both the American League and the National League... And, you know, another thing I didn't mention is, like, there could be a massive reshuffling of divisions because if you've got universal DH, why even bother having the American League and the National League? And you could throw every team into a hat and pull them out in an entirely different way. And I don't I don't know if that necessarily that's like a, an immediate thing for 2022. But, you know, the idea of, hey, if uh, the Blue Jays make the playoffs in 2022, that's a success might not necessarily be true, mm -hmm. uh, depending on, on what the rules are next year. It's, it's from here until Mark Shapiro, Ross Atkins uh, either ret retire or are fired. It is, they'll be judged on one thing. Did you win a World Series? Did you compete for a World Series? Did did you win playoff series? Were there moments? What happened? Like, it's, yeah. Okay, so we can talk about, I guess, we can talk about Kevin Gossman versus Robbie Ray, and if there's massive discrepancies between the two, I, I suppose, yeah. And, and uh, Kevin Gossman with the ZRA of six uh, is the reason why the Blue Jays aren't in the playoffs next year. Uh, that, that lands on them specifically. But I... I I don't know. Are, are fans going to care all that much if, if Robbie Ray wins the American League Cy Young Award next year and Kevin Gossman has an ERA of, of 3.9, but the Blue yes. Jays are into the playoffs and, oh, okay. and go further than, than the Seattle Mariners? No, well, sure. Yeah, obviously, they're going to care about that. Yeah. No, yeah. If, yeah. If the Mariners win the World Series and Robbie Ray is World Series MVP, <laughs> well, no, will they care? Where going with no, this, they you're won't like, care. If he's better than him and they go to the – I was like, yeah, if there, he's better, people are going to care. And to be honest, yeah, of course, if the Jays win the World Series, then that's all that matters. But mm -hmm. uh, the Jays also just missed the playoffs by one game this year. Yes, um, and so I actually do think that – looking at these things within the margins is going to be important. And that because the, the way Blake brought it up, where it is so just one for one comparison, mm -hmm. if the Jays don't win and Ray is better than Gossman, well, people are going to bring it up, man. Like that's just yeah, the way no, that it no goes. Doubt. But, and, but how do you, like, you can't just, you just can't just gloss over the vaccine thing, which is, you know, we're, we're all yeah. working in speculation there. Right. But, like if, 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 if Robbie Ray wasn't going to get vaccinated, what choice did you have? Like, yeah. But that part is speculative. That he yep. doesn't have it doesn't seem to be, but that he wasn't willing to get it, it was is is speculative. I would say that 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 point that has not been made clear at all by anybody. So all I would say about this is like, yes, of course, there's the vaccine piece, and that's going to quell just about everybody, right? Because they're always going to have that line. It's going to be basically sure. Robbie Ray won't get the vaccine is the new hot thing in the streets. It used to be that Austin Martin doesn't hit for power amongst Blue Jays fans, where you just have a thing. That's that you, true. Yeah, but it's like Robbie Ray. I know. See, that's what I mean. So, and Robbie Ray wouldn't get the vaccine is going to be the like hot thing you bring up, even if uh, he is better next year. I will just say that. Um, I was surprised. I was a little surprised that the two guys ended up on the same contract, essentially, and that the Jays didn't lean Ray. They leaned Gossman. And I, I don't really care as much about years four and five because I look at what is in front of me right now, which is that they've got George Springer. They, they just have pieces that are ready to win in the immediacy. Yeah. So, yes, ultimately, if they do win and Gossman's a part of it, who cares? No one's going to look back on that signing if they hang a banner. But if they don't... I do think that it's going to be the riskiest signing that they've done so far, and it is going to be the one that they're evaluated the most critically on. So before you go, I, I, I don't know, because I'm not as plugged into the baseball world as you, if this is a good take or an actual take or if it's a straw man or you're like, yeah, no, everybody's talking about that. So I need to do this because we used to do this together on the show, which is, hey, is this an original take or is this a good take or uh, is it just, you know, stupid and unnecessary? But... <laughs> 
When the Blue Jays were in free agency last year, one of the biggest stories of the season, or the offseason anyways, was that it was like the Blue Jays and the Mets and that there wasn't really anybody else out there because nobody had any money and everybody was poor and there's no teams that even want to be competitive. And the new problem with baseball is that it's so top-heavy because there's only a couple of teams that want to be good and then everybody else wants to be bad and blah, 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 blah. And I guess if the one thing that I can take um, as solace for all these changes to baseball, which break my heart as a traditionalist fan and adding more playoff teams is maybe more teams care. Like I look at um, the American League West and all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, uh, so you guys care all of like all you guys care about winning now, huh? Like every team in this division is going to splash around cash. All of a sudden there's four competitive teams in the American League East and all of them are looking to spend a little bit of money. I mean, the central is what it is, um, for it, like in perpetuity. Nothing can change that. But I'm looking around baseball, and there's big money contracts going out to free agents. There's new record-setting deals. Um, and there's a lot more teams that I expected trying to be good than we had thought. Is this sort of an under-discussed thing right now in baseball that, and, and I guess most specifically to the Blue Jays winning timeline, that maybe it's not going to be as easy for the Blue Jays as we once thought because there's way more teams that want to be good and there's way more money than we once thought there was going to be around the league in general. Oh, I can't imagine anybody saying it's going to be easy. If they are, yeah. They're, <laughs> they're, although, I mean, I will say that the, 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 a couple of teams that have been the most silent this offseason where all the cash is being splashed around are in the American League East and the Yankees and the Red Sox, and I thought for sure the Yankees were going to land one of those big-time shortstops, and they're still... Carlos Correa, who they all hate, and Trevor Story. Um, so I guess they could land one of those guys. And then the Red Sox, uh, yeah, it seems like that they could use a pitcher or two. But um, you're right. Like, yeah, everybody else is is trying to win where it was. Yeah, the Blue Jays had to go toe-to-toe with the Mets, and they, they outbid them for George Springer a season ago. The market is way more competitive. You know, we talked about this a little bit yesterday on the show about how – well, how, one, how stupid the lockout is, right? That that it's seemingly, it's been posited as, hey, it's a negotiating tool, except that it's not, there's no real threat of, of anybody losing any money paycheck-wise because no games are going to be lost. But secondarily, like, these teams are operating as if they know what the result of the negotiation will be, which is there's going to be more playoff teams. Like, okay, the Rangers just added some great infielders in Corey Seager and Marcus Semien. They lost 102 games a season ago. They play in the same division as the Astros and the Mariners. And I guess we got to throw the Angels in there because maybe uh, eventually, you know, you have uh, two all-time great players. They can put it together uh, and figure out the pitching in, in some respect. But, no, they're going for it because they believe the bar for entry to the postseason in 2022 is going to be lower because there's going to be two additional playoff teams um, I'm really interested to see what the trickle-down effect is when we actually see what those – and it, remember, it's, it's – well, the proposal is not even the, – the, the pushback to making one of those wild-card spots used to be, well, it's only one game, and why would you push your chips into the middle of the table for the chance of you know a coin flip nine-inning game? Well, it's a little bit more than that now. It's a three-game series. Now, granted, if you're a wild-card team, all three of those games are on the road, but I'll be interested to see if – you know, the the Rangers win 85 games in 2022 are one of those wild card teams, and it impacts um, it impacts whether teams continue to go for it in the future. Ben Ennis, thanks so much for getting us hyped up for this impending lockout and all the fun to come. It's unbelievable, <laughs> yeah, you have this kind of energy like, at your age. Yeah, that's really happy early that's birthday. Not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not 44. It's not. It's a lie. Again. What day is your if, birthday? It's February 12th. Same as Abraham it's coming Lincoln. coming up. 45 Same is as right Abraham on. Lincoln. That's awesome. <laughs> that just tells you how old he is. Uh, he yeah, yeah like you that. guys were twins. Honest, yeah. Dishonest Ben. <laughs> yeah. Lying about his age out here. Uh, uh, media member lying about their age. Wouldn't uh, be the first time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see you, buddy. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got some breaking news here. <gasps> Leafs Nation, listen up. Oh, boy. Did they get Kadri back in a trade? Austin Matthews. Yeah, oh, they, they, they lost him? something big. Austin Matthews. Shaved his mustache. Mm. Yay! Somehow his hairline looks better now that the mustache is shaved. I don't even know what to make of it. But it's out there now. Take a look. Muzzy free Matthews. No. Sorry. He's just a mustache guy now. We didn't know that he was such a mustache guy when he first came in the NHL. Now that's... We need it back quick. But now he's the ultimate mustache guy. 
We got to go. If someone wanted to get a closer look at Matthew's mustache, how might they do that? You can do that um, by going to the game that we might be giving you free tickets for. And that would be December 9th, home game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. All you have to do is download today and Thursday's episodes of the Fan Morning Show and listen for the different code words that would be placed in each podcast. Then you text the code word to 59590 and you'll be entered for a chance to win. Each code word counts as one entry and the winner will be announced this Friday, December 3rd. So if you want to go see Matthews' baby face after his Movember campaign, you can do that. Just listen to the podcast for the secret little code words, text it in and you'll be entered to win. And if you want to listen to me, talk to WWE champion Big E. Stay tuned after the break. It's the Fan Morning Show, Sports at 590 The Fan. Good morning. The Fan Morning Show. I'm Blake Murphy. She's Ailish Forfar. Really digging this song, it looks like. I like it. He's J.D. Bunkus. So this is, I, I'm, there's no Leafs, no Raptors Monday night. So I'm watching the Sportsnet channels, as I always do. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Sportsnet is Canada's home for WWE. And I can catch Monday Night Raw every Monday at 8 p.m. Uh, as well as SmackDown on Friday nights at 8 p.m. Um, but in this case, it was Monday. And Big E, who is the WWE champion, comes out. And he has cool entrance music. It's performed by Wale. And I'm like, man, I miss his old entrance music, which is what we just played him in there. Um, his gimmick, so I know you guys aren't, aren't huge wrestling guys. So his gimmick originally when he came up was a three count is not enough for him. He would beat everyone with a five count instead because he's it's that a good. good. gimmick, actually. I like that. Gimmick. And the entrance music coming in of three ain't enough, man, I need yeah. five, is uh, it's a big flex. And that's something that Biggie's used to. Is he's, Wale uh, still hot seat in the city? No, I think him and Devlin you know the squashed Wale it. Thing? No. I think him and Devlin squashed it. I know who Wale is. I don't know the drama. He and Devlin got in the thing. Yeah. One day Devlin like oh. made fun of him on a broadcast very lightheartedly. Yeah. Okay. Like he said he's no Drake or something. And Wale went up to the booth. Someone, I guess, informed him. It's also in Washington. That's they a call the game Raptors from, like, moment. in the stands. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's where kind of, Ailish, you know where the media seats are at Scotiabank. Mm-hmm. I, I've waved to you there before, like 20 <laughs> rows up in the 100 level. Um, that's where that's where Matt Devlin is calling the game from. And, yeah, there was a whole confrontation. It was, like, a thing for, like, years of, like, the Raptors-Wizards pseudo-rivalry mm-hmm. had a little extra juice because Matt Devlin and Wale had a, a rap beef. Yeah. Jeez. Matt Devlin. Matt Devlin's a big guy, too, though. Like, yeah. you don't want to throw hands with Matt Devlin. No, you and I, He'll put I, you down. I don't think Wale's a big guy, but he is backed by Big E, so you're probably, yeah. you're probably fine with it. Um, you know, I don't know that Matt Devlin has a second quite as intimidating <laughs> as the WWE champ. Mm. We're still we're having some kind of an issue with uh, the actual technical side of this. Okay, so let me get this in first, then, while yeah. we wait for Big E. Um, tickets for WrestleMania 38, which is taking place April 2nd and 3rd, are available now and wwe is coming here oh. for the first time in a long time yes uh, december 29th they'll be at the coca-cola coliseum really as part of the wwe live holiday tour um you can visit wwe.com for more and again raw on mondays at eight smackdown on fridays at eight i want to go on to the that. sportsnet channels the live events like that are a lot of fun especially if you have kids uh, i don't i go as an adult no it's way better if you don't have kids i don't have kids i go it's the best the only thing that sucks actually is if you sit right around kids because then you have to kind of dial it back a little mm. bit i've said this a million times i think that going to live wrestling events is almost as good of entertainment as you can get bang for your buck and no i'm dead serious i've been to multiple and it is so fun the crowds have all these chants it's like a soccer game Nice. They know what? Oh, it's it's so fun. They know all the chants. You get involved in it. You get to pick a side with wrestlers. You make some like side bets with your friends. It's an electric. Oh, yeah. When is that here? So that is December 29th as part of the WWE Live Holiday Tour at Coca Cola Coliseum. Um, and Except again, for Blake would be mad going with us because oh, the would Leafs be... play the Penguins that night. Um, yeah, anyway, right. WWE.com for more information. And I will say, I ran into Giannis and a bunch of the Milwaukee Bucks there. One year. Mm. Uh, another guy who's had a run in with a notable Milwaukee Buck, Big E, the WWE champion, member of the New Day, foreign powerlifting champion, ourheroesrock.org. Big E, thanks for taking the time, man. 
I appreciate it. Great segue, by the way. Well done. Very Thanks, well done. man. I appreciate it. He's been hyped up about this for days. He's been practicing. He's been wearing a singlet. <laughs> this guy, yeah. this is his He's rocking Stanley a singlet, Cup tonight. Ripping around. Well, I'm yeah. always wearing a singlet yeah. underneath my, my hoodie um, just in case stuff goes down. But Biggie knows this is like every every impromptu wrestling match like the guy just happens to come out in his wrestling gear like he was ready to go anyway it's like randy orton comes to the ring in his in his tights every single time even if he's just gonna talk like you gotta stay ready right e yeah exactly right i mean i, I sleep in my gear too just just in case <laughs> because exactly. you really you, you really just never know well you're at the top of the mountain now too you're the wwe champion so so everyone's always looking out for you um i mentioned the bucks coming in the Bucks are here in Toronto this week, Bucks Raptors, and I got to ask where your allegiances lie because you are a Tampa guy, and the Raptors just spent a year in Tampa. You are an Iowa guy, and I know Nick Nurse didn't go to the same college, but he's an Iowa guy. But I know you're a Bobby Portis guy. I know Bobby Portis celebrated that NBA championship with the New Day. So where where are you at? Are you gonna you gonna tick off the Toronto fans here? You you back in your guy Bobby Portis? Or are you coming over to the Toronto side? So that's a lot of pressure. I will say, in, in our defense, we did get Toronto Raptors gear a few years ago. It's, like, inspired by the Raptors. We, we changed a few things, so it's like a unicorn instead of the Raptor. So I feel like I've never made Milwaukee Bucks-inspired wrestling gear. So I'm going to say that I'm firmly a, uh, a Toronto Raptors fan. I'm, that's, I think that's pretty clear. That's, that's great, and I, re- I actually remember that. I, was, uh, that's, it's, I, I love that you guys weave that in through your, um, through your group and your – your attire. Um, so you are the champ now, and I know that's uh, it's a, been a long road for you to to come from college football and powerlifting through NXT, through you know uh, somehow having. To, I, I feel like you having to put up with Dolph Ziggler when you were a second is kind of the dynamic that that JD and I have here, where I'm just like I got to break out on my own, man. Um, you you had to go through <laughs> that for a little bit, um, and then I want I, him to stay in the shadow. <laughs> I also know there's an element of. You know, there have been very few black wrestlers at the top of WWE and to have this prominent a role. And, and I'm curious, coming off of Kofi's reign the other year, for you to now take that mantle, how important and how meaningful have these last couple months been to you? No, it's definitely been meaningful. Um, and you, you did mention, um, like, the, the lack of, of black champions, but uh, it was definitely true. Um, but as of three years ago, it was just The Rock who held uh, the WWE Championship. But now, uh, since 2019, you had Kofi win it, uh, Bobby Lashley won it, I won it from Bobby Lashley. So I think our company is definitely moving in a better direction, especially when you look around, you see uh, Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, uh, the rest of the New Day. I can go on and on. But uh, there's just a ton of talent, uh, I think, black talent in, in WWE right now. Um, but, man, it's, um, I think the one thing that's been really great is, uh, you know, Kofi is not necessarily the most vocal leader, but he's a guy who does a great job of leading by example. Uh, you know, and being able to watch him, the way he handled himself, the way he carried himself when he was WWE champion, the amount of media he did as well and how gracious he always was, uh, was really just a, a great example and kind of helped guide me to, to realize what was coming and, and the best way to handle myself. Yeah, one of the things that sticks out to me about Kofi's title win, is, and, and I, I remember this from back before he was in WWE and, and managing Bobby Lashley up against you guys, but MVP's reaction the night at WrestleMania that – that Kofi won and that kind of made the rounds on social. And it really, I mean, that whole Kofi mania stretch was was incredible. One thing that I love too, about Kofi reaching that mountaintop and now you reaching that mountaintop and and Xavier winning, winning King of the ring is you guys as the new day have managed to buck this wrestling thing where everyone assumes a team always has to break up. And eventually the individual is going to have to be put before the team how cool has it been for you guys to say, no, we don't need to break up. We can be, you know, Biggie can do his thing and we're still New Day. And Kofi can do his thing and we're still New Day. How important is that to the three of you who have spent so much time together building this? No, it's been essential for us. Uh, like you said, there have been people who clamored for us to break up for years and years. But you miss the moments, I think. If we had broken up in, let's say, 2015 or, you know, there's just people who wanted us to break up along the way. But I think, you know, and not to pat ourselves on the back too much, but with, uh, with our story, what I love with Kobe Mania is that we got to tell a story of brotherhood as well. It was Woods and I going through that hour-long tag team gauntlet to get Kobe that shot. And I don't think we've really ever done a, a story like that in wrestling where, uh, at least in WWE that I can recall, where two guys are fighting 
hard for an hour for this opportunity for someone else. Um, so I, I think the beautiful thing is we have a very real and genuine bond, and I thought it was just a different way to, to tell a story uh, in WWE of three guys who very genuinely want to see the others win. Like, I, I root for those guys so much. Uh, in many ways, I, I'm probably more excited about their success than I am for the things that I do uh, in my own life. So uh, I, I just love that seven-plus years later, we still have that same bond. If anything, it's just grown more. Uh, those guys were in the dark match on Raw that we just had at Long Island. And uh, getting to see them at TV and the, the, those moments where the three of us are together. Uh, Kofi just had his baby, uh, his first daughter, his third child. So it, I just love being a part of their lives. And uh, those guys have been so incredibly supportive. Uh, and, and I'm just glad that we've gotten to this point that we've had so much success and we never had to truly change who we were. We're talking to Big E, WWE champion, who you can check out uh, on Sportsnet every Monday on Monday Night Raw at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, Sportsnet's also your home for SmackDown on Friday nights in Canada. Um, you mentioned that tag team gauntlet, and the thing that stands out to me is, uh, from that story, of course, the brotherhood element, but like even the Usos forfeiting for you, for you guys because of the respect that they have for Kofi. And you guys have spent, you know, that's been probably your number one rival over the course of the new day and, and for them to show that. So, um, yeah, I think you guys told an incredible story there. I think your your time at the top now is a great extra chapter on top of that. Xavier winning King of the Ring. Um, being the champion, being at the top of the mountain has also afforded you some other opportunities. And I know you get to do this stuff a little bit anyway as a WWE superstar, um, but we have the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight, and you're doing the intros. Uh, you're doing big noon cook kickoff, cookoff, big noon kickoff, cookoff would be, would be cool too. Um, you're doing <laughs> big noon kickoff. Um, how much fun has it been to kind of get to be the guy? And you mentioned Kofi doing the media rounds and stuff. And obviously you're on here with us. Um, how, how cool is that? Cause obviously you have this, this enormous personality that you get to show in the ring, but, but it seems like that that's a lot of you as well. Yeah, I love it. And what I love too is, is getting to be in these spaces that I'm just a fan of. Like I've been a, a boxing fan all my life. Uh, I, I've been uh, college football was the first thing that I fell in love with and being able to go back to, you know, Iowa was number three in the nation when Penn state was number four and probably the biggest home win maybe ever in Iowa history, definitely in recent memory. So for me to be able to do all these incredible things that I'm just a fan of that really have little to do with wrestling, but also to be able to represent the company in these different spaces uh, is just really, really cool. And uh, the great thing is, like, we have, we have some more things coming. Uh, it's, it's just, in my mind, it's, it's just getting started um, with being able to do these uh, things in different avenues. Uh, so I'm just really having so much fun doing it. Like you said, uh, you know, I've had opportunities to do some cool things before as, as a WWE superstar, but they're really, there's just something, you know, when you're able to walk, even if someone doesn't watch wrestling or they're, they're not, you know, maybe they're a lot fan or whatever it is, but when you can put on the, the, the marquee WWE champion, you know, it just, it affords you a certain level of respect. And, uh, and I've noticed that it's open doors for me. Yeah, and, and so, um, you know, you are the champ, which means having to defend that title. And again, people can check you out on Raw every Monday on Sportsnet, um, and they can check you out at the WWE Live Holiday Tour here in Toronto at Coca-Cola Coliseum on December 29th, uh, WWE.com for more. Shortly after that event, Big E, you've got a title defense against Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. I don't know if Seth qualifies. I think KO qualifies for the big meaty men slap and meat tag, right? Yes, I, I think he's big enough to, to be considered a big meaty man. We'll put him in there. All right. Uh, also a Canadian, but uh, I think the audience will, will have your back for that one. Uh, that's WWE Day 1 on January 1st, um, and that's in Xavier Woods' backyard uh, in, in Atlanta. Um, Biggie, WWE champion, member of the New Day, ourheroesrock.org. Thank you so much for taking the time this morning. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Biggie, the champ. Again, Monday Night Raw. On Mondays at 8, SmackDown on Fridays at 8, all on Sportsnet. You're home for WWE here in Canada. Um, tickets for WrestleMania 38, tickets for that WWE Live holiday tour on December 29th at Coca-Cola Coliseum. All that at WWE.com. So when I found out the New Day existed was I saw them for the first time at Coca-Cola Coliseum. Nice. I went and people wore all the, like, they were pretty new. and I want to go to this real bad. I know. We're definitely going to go. Oh. So hold on. People wear, like, rainbow socks, and they had, like, unicorn clothing, and it's <laughs> yes, just it's the very flamboyant. unicorn horns yeah. that you can get. Yeah. They just, and 
I remember looking at the gear thinking, oh, that's actually pretty cool stuff. And they came out, and one of them plays a trombone. trombone. Yeah, that's yes, it. Yes, Francesca, wow. the trombone. Yeah, so they play a trombone. They came out as a whole big show. They had a whole gimmick. And it is funny because they had cereal. Yeah. yeah Bootios. They had, like yeah, the food? Yeah, there was something with booty. I knew it was yeah, like booty. Yeah, booty. Yeah, like pirate's throwing, booty. Yes. Throwing, oh, well, sure. No, not like Not pirates. that. But you got to pick up the Pirates. They also came out of a giant cereal box at WrestleMania one time. Yes. That was their entrance. So, wow. but it's funny because I remember seeing them and it was really fun, right? It was really fun. It was really high energy. They obviously had a bit of a cult following, but this just shows you how little I know about wrestling. I remember seeing it going, oh yeah, this isn't like, this is hot right now, but this is one of those things in wrestling. Like you get them from time to time where there's uh, what's what was that one guy's name that danced? Fandango. <laughs> Fondango. Yes, you, you get gotta, these dudes. It's like Davis Burton's. So you gotta, yeah. you gotta let that a breathe. You get these dudes who show up and they have a like hot gimmick for a second, but then it gets really tired very quickly. And I sort of thought that's what those guys were. And now, like we're talking to him, he's the WWE champion. Two of the three have been champ, and the other one's the king of the ring. That's awesome. So congrats to those guys. That's awesome that they've had that kind of success. That they've been able to continue that kind of branding. Now, for the more important thing is, we're bringing. Do we go? I, I don't know how we all go together, though, because this is the problem with this, is that, like, I have friends I normally go to wrestling with. So do I. I know you do. That's what I'm saying. I don't. <laughs> I know you don't. But, and you're an easy locker room guy, right? Oh, Except yeah. for with Blake, because you show up and you yeah. throw him under the bus with people. With, Actually, maybe this is how Blake gets Marie. his revenge. Yeah. Blake, you you take Ailish to wrestling, and then you go, ah, uh, She's the only person I could get. I tried 20 other people. Yeah. <laughs> she, she won a battle royal with yeah. 20 of my other friends. And Ayla, she's... As long as I get to go. Yeah. It's, I'll take it. It is really fun. I'm not going to lie. It yeah, is really fun. They're a blast. It's yeah. a Wednesday night, though. We're all going to be. Yeah, but it's a Wednesday night during the holidays where, like, is anyone really well, going to be? You're not even going to be here. Oh, it's right now. It's soon. It's the 29th. It's December 29th. Well, that solves that. Mm. JD's out. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't think I'll be here either. No. Mm. I'll be visiting my parents. Well, me and Vic. Vic. Oh. Me and Vic will go. You should be able to get tickets for that. From, oh, yeah. From work. Well, I mean, I don't. I've never tried, but either. I'm putting them on public. Hey. Hey, listen up, folks. I'll come back early for Look, the free tickets. I've covered wrestling before. If they want to yeah. give me a press pass instead, you know, maybe maybe Giannis is going to be there again. You're just reminding me, though, that I went to this event with our friend Jackie Redman mm. that I was talking about. And. Never have I felt so much like uh, what's his uh, Jason Siegel and forgetting Sarah Marshall. Oh, where he's yeah. holding the hold, purse. hold the purse, lurch. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, hey, will you take a picture of us? That's all I did basically, like half the night. Every time we go to the concourse, to have, it was though, just like, as a friend, you take a picture. I'm like, yeah. Again, I just I must have gotten so many germs from <laughs> all the dirty wrestling fan phones I touched that evening. Uh, I was a long, long night as a photographer. Let me just say, uh, I. I Jackie Roman is a much bigger celebrity than me, especially in the wrestling world. This has been made, that was made very, 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 very clear that evening. Um, all right. So that was Big E. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we had some good guests earlier in the show as well. Um, mm-hmm. Shai Davidi, Ben Ennis, Talking Blue Jays. Um, Blair and Barker are coming up after this for two hours. Um, they'll also have uh, John Harper and Stephen Matz on the show today. Stephen Matz. Yeah. So that's, Stephen that's Matz. pretty cool. Um, you know, we might be at a Jay stuff to talk about soon because that labor stoppage happens at 11.59 p.m. tonight. What might also stop the Toronto Maple Leafs winning ways against no. the Colorado Avalanche at 7.30 on Sportsnet. Uh, that line hanging in there at minus 125 for the Leafs, plus 120 in regulation. What's the, Ailish, what's the number one thing you're looking for in this game from the Leafs side? Um, It's going to be a star night. I think if you got... Kadri, who's a star now, and you got McKinnon, they're going to be putting up some some pain tonight. I think it needs to be a big night from Austin Matthews with his new bear face, and I want to see him and like Marner. how I pictured it as like a bear face, like an like, uh, like a the rawr. Rawr. you know the yeah. like with the Snapchat filters where they used to be the one with the bear where that dad scares the kid in his back seat. Yeah. Where he's like I'm a bear, and the kid's yeah. crying. You get a little Austin Matthews. That's what I pictured. Actually, yeah, I want to see. The stars come out tonight and and make this a game that there's no question marks afterwards that the Leafs are dominant. And we sent someone to this game. Someone won free tickets to this game, so that's cool too. You know what I want from this game? I want Jack Campbell to play well because I just released an Instagram video explaining why Jack Campbell is the most underrated story of the year, and I really don't want that video to look 
ass yeah. 15 minutes later. Okay. Yeah. So how about you guys do me a favor and don't have this. Or be... else I'm getting in the comment section of that video and I'm, we're just going to roast you because you jinxed it or something. You know, get your crystals. I really, I didn't need, you know, encouragement for people to hate me on social media. Do it. Like, it, do it, it. people are doing that just fine. Jack Campbell has had two games all season where his save yeah. percentage was below 913. <sighs> I think you you're know okay. what regression is, though. Regression. Yeah, but you regress to what your mean is. You don't mm-hmm. regress under the mean, and most of the data suggests Jack Campbell's probably about a nine fifteen, maybe even nine twenty goalie. <sighs> Just please, Jackie, don't make me look like it's a fool. It's gonna be a fun night. I can't wait to see the Leafs back so, in action. Tell you, yeah. I, I'm not even gonna know what to do with the optimism if they they come out of this one with a big win as well. So go Too, to, so much has been going well. So go to my Instagram, check out that video, leave a review, leave a comment, share it, do all those nice things, um, and I'll love you for it. And download the podcast wherever you get yeah, your podcast. It's too. the Fan Morning Show. We'll be back tomorrow. Coming in next, Blair and Barker with Stephen Matz on at some time during that show. We've been the Fan Morning Show. Sportsnet 590, The Fan.